All right, so the next thing we'll do is start working on the pipe in the bottom. And let's just zoom in on that. And it's a little hard to see, but it looks pretty simple. All right, so let's do that. So let's go into the top view and let's grab a cylinder. Let's just drag that out and we'll worry about the size in a second. Okay. Let's just move this down to the bottom. And we'll also center it on uh, X and Y. And let's see, let's do, let's do a radius of about 60. And let's do a height of about 15 maybe to start. And we'll do one height segment, one cap segment, and 18 sides. Let's just move that up a bit. All right, and we'll convert to Stettable Poly. Let's go into Polygon and select them all. Then we'll deselect the middle ones. So we just have the top and bottom caps. All right, there we go. So let's just delete those. And let's go into border and select the bottom border. And let's just shift drag that down on the Y. And let's scale it in. Maybe something like that. And let's uh, shift drag it down again. And one more time. And we'll scale this one in a bit. And let's move that up. All right, just to level it out here. And then we'll shift drag one more time. All right, and I think that's uh, probably good enough for this bottom piece. You're never really gonna see it anyways when it's on the model, so. And I think we want this to be a little bit more round here. So let's go into edge and select an edge here and we'll do a ring. And let's do a connect on that. And we'll just do one segment, no pinch, no slide. And then let's scale this guy out a bit. Just a bit, just to round this over. Okay. And I think that should be fine. So let's chamfer down some edges. And let's select uh, this one here and the one underneath. And we'll do a loop on those. And let's chamfer that down. And we'll do this pretty tight. Let's do something like 0.25 or so and OK. Let's select this one here and loop that and chamfer. Let's bring that up a bit, about 0.4 maybe, and OK. And I think we'll leave these ones here so that it's uh, a smooth rollover. And you can see we have kind of a seam here running along this part. So let's maybe add that in quickly. So let's select an edge here and do a ring and a connect. And let's just move this edge down. Maybe about negative 45 or so on the slide with one segment and OK. And let's chamfer this one. Let's see, let's do, let's do about 0.4 on that and OK. And then we'll select an edge on the inside here and ring that one. And then we'll do another connect and we'll do one segment right in the middle. So no pinch, no slide. And let's extrude this edge in. So let's take the height down and bring that in a bit. Let's do negative one. And we'll just leave the base at three. All right. And with that edge still select, let's do a chamfer on that one. And let's also do that 0.4. And let's select the outside two edges. And we'll loop those and chamfer these down. Let's bring this down a little bit. Let's do about 0.2 or so on that. And OK. 
and let's put a turtle smooth on here and see if that looks okay. Okay, so that gives us the illusion that there's a seam in here, and I think the rest of it's uh, good enough. We might be able to move it up just a bit. Okay, I think that should be good. So let's change the color of that to black. And yeah, we'll just put our blue material on there. So now let's move on to the actual cap. Great, and we're going to do this a little bit sharper as well, like we did for the uh, insets up here and at the bottom, just because I think if we do it this soft, it's uh, going to look... Um, kind of weak in uh, a render so let's sh we're going to sharpen this up quite a bit more than it is here alright so let's start working on this piece so let's go to the front view and let's zoom in on the hole and we'll go into the crate panel and grab a cylinder and let's just drag that out alright and we'll give it some height and we'll figure out the radius in a sec and let's also right click the move tool and zero the X and Y spinners. Right, and then we'll just move it to the front and just pull it out here. And later on we'll uh, adjust the length of this extrude because I think that's a little too far out. Right, so let's put it there for a second. And let's go in here and we'll set the radius on this to, let's do, let's do about 46. Looks about right. And let's do something like 30 maybe for the height. And we don't need any height segments. Let's do two cap segments. And we'll leave it at 18 sides, and I think that's a, a decent size to start with. So we'll go with that. So let's just change the color to make it easier to see. Alright. So let's right click and convert to edible poly. Let's go to polygon and we'll just select all the polys. Let's deselect the front ones and the side ones so we just have the back faces. And we'll just delete those. Alright, and let's go into edge and we'll select an edge around here and do a ring and a connect. And let's slide this to the back. Let's do something like maybe 70, negative 70 on the slide for that one. And OK. And let's go into vertex. Let's see. Let's grab all the front verts. Okay. Then we'll deselect the center ring. So all we have is the outside uh, ones. We're just going to scale this down a little bit. Okay, so let's bring that down a little bit in the front view. Maybe something like that, just a, just a little bit. Okay, and now let's go into Polygon and we'll turn on Ignore Back Facing. And in the front view, let's just select some of these polygons. Select, do these two here, and we'll skip one, and we'll do these two, skip one, all the way around. Alright, so just like that. And we'll select these same uh, pairs on the ring okay so just like that and we'll do an inset on this and let's do that let's do that about two okay and now we'll do a bevel now let's do that local normal and we'll bring this down and let's bring that in say negative three 
And for the outline, let's do negative two maybe on that. Okay, so we have these tapering in a bit. And I think that should be fine. All right. And let's go up here on the uh, back ring here. We'll select an edge there. We'll do a ring on that. And let's do a connect. And we'll just do one segment and let's just slide that a little bit to the front. Let's do about 65 or so on the slide. And OK. All right, and let's go in here and we'll select another ring here. OK, just around the back. And we'll control click polygon to get a polygon selection from that. And then we're going to do an extrude. And we'll do that local normal. Let's just bring this down a bit. Let's do that about. Let's do about maybe two. And OK. OK, so let's go into the front view and we'll go into edge and let's just select these center edges here. Right, and we'll do a connect on that. Let's do one segment. And let's bring that out a bit. Let's do about negative 40 on the slide for that one. Hit OK. Then we'll go into polygon and we'll select the center polygons. And we'll extrude these out. Let's bring it out a bit. Let's do about four or so on that. And OK. And let's do another one here. Let's go into Edge and reselect the center edges. Let's do another Connect. And let's bring that out. Let's do about 40 on the slide for that one. And OK. And then we'll go back into Polygon here. And let's hit Shrink once. All right, so we have these center ones selected. And we'll just extrude that a little bit just to get a little more detail in the front. Let's do that about, let's do two on that maybe. And OK. Right, so let's chamfer down some of these edges. Let's go into Edge and we'll grab this one here and this one. We'll do a loop on those. And let's chamfer those down. We'll do this pretty tight. Let's do 0.5 and OK. Then we'll grab this one here, do a loop and a chamfer, and let's bring that down a bit or up a bit. Let's do about 0.7 or so on that one. Let's do 0.6 actually. And OK. And then we'll do the front one here. Let's do that pretty tight. Let's do about a 0.3 on that. And then we'll come up to the back here and select these two edges on the extrude. And loop them. And we'll roll these over a little bit. And let's do 0.3 on that as, as well. And OK. And we're going to need to add a support edge along uh, th this part here, but let's put a turbo smooth on first before we do that. So we'll do turbo smooth, two iterations, and ice line. All right. And let's drop back down into uh, edit poly. And we'll go into edge, and let's select an edge here. And we'll do a ring. And let's turn on show and result. OK, and we'll do a connect. And we'll do one segment, and let's just slide this to the front until we get uh, these edges to look as sharp as we want. Let's do maybe about negative 75 or so on that. Okay. 
We'll see how that looks. And that looks okay. Could maybe sharpen these insets up a little bit more. So let's turn off the turbo smooth. We'll go into edge. And let's just select an edge on the inside of this inset here. We'll do that on each one. Okay, just do a corner on the uh, each one of these. All right, then we'll do a ring. All right, and let's do a connect on that, and we'll just do one semi with no pinch, no slide, just so it's right around the center, and that should sharpen that up. So let's put the turbo smooth back on. Let's see if that looks a little better. And I think we can maybe make this uh, extrude here a little bit thicker. So let's go into the left view. Let's turn off Turbo Smooth and we'll go back into Vertex and let's uncheck Ignore Back Facing. We'll just drag through these ones here. Let's just pull that back a bit just to thicken this up a bit. We'll see what that looks like. Okay, so I think that looks probably alright. Let's change the color and just put the blue material on there. Alright, I think we'll have to uh, shorten up this uh, piece here coming out. It looks a little too far out. So let's go into the left view and we'll select the beam part of the hydrant and we'll drop down into vertex. Let's just grab the end ones here. Let's just pull that back a bit. I think something like that should be good. And we'll get out of that. And now we'll just move the cap in and just intersect it a bit. Okay? And we'll see how that looks. Okay, I think that should work fine. So we'll go with that. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is clone this cap for these two ones here. So let's select that. And in the front view here, let's just shift drag a copy of this up. And choose copy, and we'll just do one, and OK. And let's uh, go up to rotate and turn on rotation snaps here. And we'll just rotate this 90 degrees. OK. Then we'll right click on the move tool. And we're just going to zero out the X and the Y. And we'll just move this forward. Okay. And in the left view here, let's just move this down. And then we'll scale it. Okay, and we'll see how that looks. And I think we can come down a little bit more. All right. And I think that looks pretty good right there. And I'm not sure if we need to shorten these up a bit too, like we did for the front. And we could probably take it in a bit. So let's go into the front view and select the main piece. And we'll drop down into vertex and grab these end ones here. And let's just pull those back a bit. Maybe a little bit more. Okay. And let's grab the other side and we'll move that in and try to match it. Okay, something like that. And then we'll grab our cap and we can just push that back a bit. And I think we might better go a little bit bigger on that, so let's just scale it up slightly.
and we might need to pull the back border in a bit just so we don't have a gap. All right, so let's turn off Turbo Smooth and we'll uh, drop down an editable pulley. Let's grab the back border. And in left view, I'm just going to scale that in a bit. Okay, something like that. Just until it intersects this piece here. And I think we could go up just a bit on this. And we'll just line this edge up here with this one to make sure that it's even. Okay, just like that. And I think that should be good. So let's clone this over to the other side. So let's do a mirror. And we'll do a copy on the X. And let's just move this over. And we'll line it up the same way. Just like that. Okay, everything looks pretty even. Now let's also put our turbo smooth back on the space piece. Okay. So the next thing we'll start working on here is just these bolts. All right. So let's go into the front view and we'll zoom in on the, the cap. Let's go into the create panel and we'll grab a cylinder. And let's just drag that out in the center and give it some height. And we'll do this, uh, let's see, we want about five sides. And let's see how big that looks before we adjust the radius. Okay, let's uh, take the length down a bit. Let's do about 13 on the length, or the height, sorry. And for the radius, let's try, let's do seven. And we don't need any height segments. Okay, I think that's about the size we're looking for. All right, so seven on the radius, 13 on the height, uh, one height segment, one cap segment, and five sides. So let's right click and we'll convert this one to editable poly. Let's go to polygon and we'll select them all and then deselect these ones. So we just have the back piece, select it and we'll just delete that. Okay, and then we'll go into Edge, and let's just select the front edges here. So we'll drag through these, and then deselect these ones. So we just set the front one, select it, and we're just going to chamfer that down a bit. And let's see, let's do a double chamfer on this. Let's do about 0.6 or so on the first one, and we'll hit Apply and we'll bring this down a bit more. Let's do about 2.25 on that one. Okay. And then we'll select this edge here and do a ring and a loop. And we'll chamfer that one down. And let's do that about 0.5 or so. And we'll see how that looks. Let's just change the color of it here. Okay, I think that's about the right size. So let's select that piece again. And we'll drag a copy up on the Y. And choose copy. 
and let's rotate that 90 degrees and we'll move it out here for this cap and let's just line it up with this edge here and we'll just slightly intersect it and then we gotta move it back actually so let's go up and uh, right click the move tool and we'll zero out the Y spinner okay so let's do a mirror on that and a copy on the X again and we'll move this to the side right just like that and then we'll select this piece here and we'll do another copy shift drag copy up on Y and we'll rotate this 90 degrees and let's right click the move tool and zero out the X and the Y and then we'll move this up for the top piece here and I think this one should be a little bit longer uh, maybe not well, let's make it a little bit longer let's go into vertex grab the top ones and we'll just pull that up a bit okay now let's just push that down a little bit make sure it's intersecting the surface here alright so we're getting there uh, we still have to do the chain brackets and the bolts. Alright, so the next thing we'll do is start working on the bolts.